guys james carter tv continuing actually ending my 2016 nfl draft recaps ah it's taken 20 what is it taking 23 days but finally we are here at the end the Miami Dolphins, you guys drew the short stick, you came last, but you waited patiently, and you are rewarded, because here we are, and I think the Dolphins had a pretty good draft. And they start with the first pick, the pick that everyone's loving, right? And I loved it too on draft day, but you have to calm down, and I'll tell you why. Offensive tackle Laramie Tunsil taken with the 13th overall pick in the draft. Now, it was an A, now it's a B. And let me tell you why, he's a clown. The video was bad. Uh, you know, the guy looked like he was a character out of Breaking Bad. Yes, it was three years ago, but it was bad. He's a clown. You know, the guy's a clown. He's a liability. He's a problem. He's an issue. And then now you're telling me that you're playing him at left guard? I mean, where is that coming from? The Ravens are on this left guard train, too. I don't know why these, these, these teams are taking these two bona fide tackles. They are tackles. As guards, I know you have to start their career somewhere easily, and yeah, Brandon Albert, and you don't want to. Well, then why'd you take him, right? So, I, I you know, like, I, it, it loses some value. He's still a good player, and he's of value, but there's a clown here. There's some clown traits. Not as much of a clown as Robert Clown Dietschy, um, you know, but. It hurts a little bit. I give it a B, but he's a really, really good player. I'll give it. He could be a damn all star. I think I had him as an all star. So, or what's the? It is an all star, right? A Pro Bowler. That's where we are. We're talking NFL. So, I mean, I think he can be. Uh, definitely, but you know, there is some bust ability here. We move on to the second round, thirty eighth pick overall, cornerback Xavier Howard out of Baylor. So here's the thing, athletically very good. I mean, the guy showed that he's an athlete at the combine. On the tape, he could be really good at times, but boy, he could be bad. Handsy, bad technique. Guy knows when he loses, he just starts to start tucking away at the wide receivers, drawing penalties, needs to be a little more reserved and learn the nuances of the quarterback position. A little too, uh, it, against the run, I think it's pretty good against the run, but definitely can get better. I think it's a little bit of a reach here. I agree with the need. The need is here. The good thing is that Byron Maxwell can be good for you. He'll only be a number two corner, and I'm on board with that because I don't think he's going to be a number one. But I'm intrigued. It's not a horrible pick. I just wouldn't have made it. I give it a B. We move on. Third round, 73rd pick overall, running back Kenyon Drake out of Alabama. I'm not in love with it. And I know you are, right? You looked at the Kenyon Drake highlights. You're saying, look at this guy. This guy's going to make great plays for us from a play-to-play -play basis. We got a steal here, and I'm going to tell you no. He's just not a... A, a guy you can give 20 carries to. He's not. He's never going to be. He's not going to be productive in that aspect. He's a change of pace back that you're able to bring in there to be a change of pace as he was to Derrick Henry, as he was to Eddie Lacy, as he was to... No, that was pretty much it. Guys that, you know, have a different play style than him. Now you have Jay Ajayi, who's playing well. Adam Gase is talking him up, so I like this pick more now but I just question, why are you taking a guy that's only rotational in the third round when you have needs? You have needs that you need to fill. I mean, your guards aren't very good. Well, now you have Laramie Tunsil playing guards, so I guess that's okay. Your defensive line isn't very good. You're really going to trust Mario Williams to come in and fix your defensive line issues? Uh, I know you like Jordan Phillips out of Oklahoma who came out last year, but you can still improve there. Linebackers are awful. Oh, my God, your linebackers are bad. You know, and your secondaries, you need some work, too. You just took one, so I'll give you some slack there, though. So, uh, really? You needed to take a rotational running back here? No. I give it a C+. Plus. We move on to the third round yet again. Wide receiver Leontre, Leontre Caru out of Rutgers. Now, a guy that's very tough, man. This guy gets the ball and look out because this guy's looking to make plays. This guy's looking to run you over and run you over, run the next guy over, run linebackers. Very physical, tough. Guy, athletic, sure. I mean, he's not a great athlete, but in terms of this year's draft, yeah, he's a pretty good athlete. Has some clown in him at Rutgers. Got in some trouble. Got into some... Uh, the one There was one incident back in 2013. Oh, you missed a curfew. I don't care about that. But 2015, there were still some rumblings about coaches really don't like him. You know, so I don't really like hearing about that at all. Uh, but made some plays at Rutgers, and I think he was a pretty good value here. So I'll give you a B+. Plus. Uh, 
I'll give you that, but you look out because there's yet again some clown here. We move on to the sixth round. Wide receiver Jakeem Grant out of Texas Tech. You double dip at wide receiver. I'm not a big fan of double dipping, but you have Jarvis Landry, you have Devontae Parker. Both of them are good. After that, you really don't have anything. Now you have Ke Leonte Caru. So I'm okay with this because Jakeem Grant gives you something different. This guy is 5'6". Right, he gives you uh, a really, uh, in terms of kick returning ability, that's what he's giving you. A guy that's going to be returning a lot of kicks, and we'll see what he can do with that. Great speed. Uh, so, will he be able to make the roster with that lack of height? I mean, we'll see. I mean, I've seen it before. So, you know, I'm sure you already look at the highlights and you're saying, oh, look at this kid. This kid's just amazing. But, man, there's not many 5'6 wide receivers running around for a reason, man. I'm intrigued. And I think as a punt returner, though, a kick returner, he'll give you a lot of value there. I give it a B+. We move on. Sixth round, 204th pick overall. Defensive back, probably strong safety. Jordan Lucas out of Penn State. Don't love it. You know, I don't think he's a very good athlete. I think he has poor instincts as a corner. He played two years a corner, one year of safety as a corner. Wasn't very impressive. The safety was better, but I don't think he has very good instincts, very good intelligence of what's going on on the football field before him. As a tackler, he's fine, but could still be better if he's going to play safety. I'm not in love with it. I give it a C+. We move on, 7th round, 223rd pick overall, Brandon Doty out of Western Kentucky. Guy put up hella stats. I mean, the guy put up stats on stats on stats for playing for the Conference USA. 6'3", 217 pounds, nice, you know, height, the size, could add some weight, but that's fine, not horrible. Arm strength is bad, and I'm not sure he's ever going to be a starter. In fact, I'm sure he's never going to be a starter. As a backup, okay, fine, but he's a backup that you never want to play, and I think you should get a backup that you at least want to play. This is seventh round, so I think he's going to be a third round, a third string guy that sticks around. I don't see the value. I don't know why you're taking this kind of guy right here. I only give it a B minus. And then we end with the seventh round, 231st pick overall. My favorite pick of this Dolphins draft, tight end Thomas Duarte out of UCLA. Now, I already know you've heard the scouts. Oh, he doesn't have tight end size. He looks like a wide receiver. Oh, he's not a great block. Look, I turned on the film. For, um, who was it? For, who's the quarterback at UCLA? Josh Rosen. This kid was making plays. I mean, this was the guy that was Josh Rosen's go-to target. And he was making plays. He was getting open. I see some cr uh, crisp route running ability. He went to the combine. He outperformed a lot of his competitors at the combine. I think there's a lot of value here. I think he's going to make the team. I think he's going to make an impact. And a pretty good impact. I mean, I think this is a guy that a lot of teams are sleeping on, and they're going to regret it. I give it an A+. I'm a big fan of Thomas Duarte. So there you go, Miami Dolphins draft. You put in all these grades into my GPA calculator. Out comes a GPA of 2.92 out of 4, which is equal to a B. It's in between a B- minus and a B. I'll give it a B. You know, the Dolphins have had huge problems drafting over the years. I don't think this is going to fix it. It's not horrible. It's not like your 2013 draft with Deion Jordan and Jamar Taylor and this clown and that clown and that clown and this clown. But, you know, it's better than that. It's not great. You could have a pro bowler. I'll give you that. You, know, you could have a starting corner. But then I think that's pretty much it. And Thomas Duarte could end up being a starting ten, and I'll give you that. So I'm interested. I'm intrigued. You know, I, I may regret giving them a B. It's probably ended up being a C. I, I don't think there's much upside here. I probably should have given them a B minus. Now that I think about it. Okay, I'm changing my mind. It's a B minus. So there you go. I, I just changed my mind on a whim. I'm allowed to do it. It's my channel. It's a B minus draft. It's not horrible, but I think he could have done more. You know, just a little more inspired. It's a fine draft, though. So until next time, James Carter TV, I'm out. Peace.